Hello, my name is Malik Harrington, and welcome to another episode of the Family Budget Fisherman. Um, I know that I typically will post once a week, and then there are certain times when I don't post for a few weeks, and that just has to do with, you know, a lot of movement going on in the house and the family and so forth. But this is actually one of those opposites where I, I, I got so excited about this. I know I just posted a video this past Saturday, but I had to share with you all uh, what, what I just pur purchased at Sportsman's Warehouse last night. Uh, the deal was just, it was so good, I had to share it. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, considering we're going into the holiday period and we're all trying to be budget conscious, um, I wanted to share with you this, uh, <laughs> this really good buy that I made. And uh, without further ado, here it is. So last night I purchased this rod. This is a um, this is a Phoenix M1. Phoenix M1. It's a pretty good rod. It's a really good rod, as I understand. Uh, and it is. This is a 7.4 extra fast action. Uh, the lure weight on here is one eighth to three fourths. And the line weight on here is six to twelve pounds, and um, this is a this is a innovation of their M1. Now, the M1 has been around for about uh, oh lord, maybe eight or ten years. But what they've added this is the new vortex construction. As you know, it doesn't have a. You can see it doesn't have a any. It has doesn't have the split handle like the older models do, did. This has something to do with the balancing of the rod. Um, I wanted a medium heavy, but Sportsman's didn't have a medium heavy. And I'll tell you why I purchased from Sportsman's um, and I didn't go anywhere else to make the purchase. And I probably could have gotten a medium heavy. And then why I got the Phoenix rod all together. Um, I'm not, it, this is not a typical rod for me. And so, um, uh, so I'm gonna be trying out this rod. <laughs> Um, I like the guides that it has, uh, the, the no tangle guides. Uh, they call these guides, uh, it's listed here somewhere. It says Vortex Construction, one piece amplified. Oh, it's 36 ton Torre carbon fiber, uh, which is the blank. Uh, and I think most of the mid to higher end rods are doing between 30 and 40 six you may get some at 50 but there there's a there's an area where there's a break where there's a drop off so i just recommend if you that your sweet spot should be between the 30 ton and the 46 ton i probably wouldn't go too much beyond that uh, it's just getting into the technology of the rod but um here's the big deal uh this rod costs 177 dollars okay at sportsman's warehouse and I think that's pretty much what the retail price is everywhere. I paid $111 for this rod, seven foot four, paid $111, okay? Um, and at that price, if they were ever to <laughs> retail at, at, at that price, they would just wipe themselves out. <laughs> so I had to get it, okay? Now, here's what's interesting. I also got a bag of baits. Now this is about, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 57, 58 dollars worth of baits that I got for 30 dollars. Um, so, and I'll tell you how this actually worked itself out. So. I got uh, the Rage Tail. That's a $6 bag or uh, package right there. All these are about $6. Uh, another Rage Tail. This is a, clearly a white Rage Tail. I don't have to tell you that color there. But this color here is a Falcon Lake Crawl. Another Rage Tail Falcon Lake Crawl. Got some more Rage Swimmers. 
And I got the three inch, most of you know I'm a multi-species fisherman. And while I am interested in big bass, I'm also interested in big crappie and that uh, will accommodate both. And then on occasion, I get the stripers and the, um, and the catfish out of there. But I, I more than most of the time I target big crappie and the bass family. Uh, and and, and that's, that's, those are my two targets. And with that, I get the other fish. Um, I don't know if I said it, but here's some more. This is the um, sexy, uh, sexy shad type color. And then uh, this is a new, well, it's not new, but it's new to me. The Demiki, uh, these Demiki baits. This is an armor shad, it's a three inch. And um, as you know, I personally consider the three inch the sweet spot for getting larger than your average crappie and while, while not sacrificing your three to five pound bass, okay? Um, and then of course, I have equipment to just target huge bass over five pounds. And then uh, I got something that I considered new, even though it's probably not new. This is the Rage Tail Baby Bug. It's right here, you can see it there. Guess my neighbor's dog is just awakened. <laughs> and then I got me some tube jigs, the Bitsy Tubes, and I love these Bitsy Tubes because in a pinch they can do some great work. Then I also got, this is the Guggen Baits Rattling Ned. Now let me tell you my own personal experience with Guggen Baits. Um, I think that it is a innovative company in the sense that you got four, five, six, or seven guys to get together and create a company that is very profitable for them based upon, and, and the company literally is based upon the subscriber base that they built in with YouTube. They turned that into something, and that, there's something be, to be said for that. That said, their baits, um, I personally never saw most of their baits to be particularly innovative and interesting. Um, I think they're good baits, um, but, but when I compare, say, their worms, I don't see much innovation from the Berkeley um, selection of worms, say your power bait worms and the Guggenbait worms. I mean, design is a little different, but fish aren't really particular about design as they are about movement, about reaction, um, and what it means to them. But now they did something I thought was pretty interesting with the Ned bait. They add, you probably, hopefully you can hear that. They added a rattle to it. And I said, now I could go home and put some rattles in my Ned rigs and I'd have enough to do that. But I wanted to purchase theirs and see how it worked out. I mean, I thought that was a real innovation right there. And so um, I initially thought, well, maybe I should just geek out, you know, like most of the young folks and get a bag <laughs> of Guggen baits with the rod and we just call it a day but no I, I didn't do that I just went on and got some items that I wanted to get but just so that you know here are my three receipts and I'm going to read these out to you I got my personal information on them so um, I'm not going to really show them to you so the rod just so that you know was $175 retail I actually, my subtotal on that, because I got a $30 off coupon that I've had for some time. Uh, Sportsman's Warehouse was giving away coupons that they had overproduced at one time, and they don't have expiration dates on them, and I'm down to my last few. Uh, so I got $30 off of that. So my, my, pre, my, my subtotal is $147, okay? That's what I actually shelled out in cash for the rod. And I'll tell you why I said earlier $111, but just keep counting. So for what's in this bag, they had something called holiday bucks. For each item that you spent $100, uh, over $100 at their store, they gave you something called, uh, a $25 off coupon called um, holiday bucks. So um, I purchased um, that Daiwa Tatula 
uh, rod, not the elite, but the Daiwa Tatula. Um, at their store was $169 uh, before taxes. I had a $30 off coupon, so I paid $139 for the rod. However, they gave me $25, that $25, uh, because my subtotal was still over $100. So it was $25 more that I applied to this purchase. And um, the, remember, if you, if you remember, the reason I bought that rod is because the rod tip on, my, on one of my two Corrados had broken. And since Shimano is real finicky with their uh, warranty replacement policy, I just went on and got another rod um, for close to the amount that I would have purchased outright um, some, uh, with Shimano or even their warranty replacement. So, and you'll find that out uh, when you see the Daiwa Tattoola in another video. Now, so $147, okay? Now, what's in this bag totals 50, let's see, 50 for $54, okay? Because I had to do it in two receipts. Oh, I forgot to mention. I got another $25 off coupon um, because, and my dog, the dog again. I don't know if you remember me mentioning in a video in the past, but um, we've moved to Redding, uh, California, my family and I, uh, for business reasons. And we are probably just gonna go ahead on and settle here. This is a lovely place if you've never been to Redding. We're about two and a half hours north of Sacramento where we're from. Uh, so we were here in an area called Palo, uh, Palo Acedro. Um, it's a beautiful area, and we were here, when we first got here, we were there for a little while, and pg e Pacific Gas and Electric, for those of you who are watching in different parts of the country, that's a privately owned uh, public utility out here, and they cut the power off over here in the area because of fires and potential for fires. Well, I ended up having to buy a power supply for the house for whenever they would cut it off. So I bought a Gold Zero, um, 200 watt um, power uh, bank, and um, I got and you know I paid a little bit of extra money for that, but I needed that for a particular reason, and so I got a $25 off coupon once I made that purchase, and I used the $30 discount there because I bought it at Sportsman's Warehouse. So that totaled um, that gave me $50 in these holiday bucks. But you can only use, um, you can't stack the coupons, so I had to split the purchase. So my total was $54 for what's in here, okay? So if I had paid retail of uh, the 54 plus the 177, what is that, 230, let's see, 50, 50 plus 7, <laughs> 170 is 120, and then you add the 7 and the 4, that's 231, okay? So $231 I would have had to pay for this whole package if I bought it retail with no coupons. And my out the door price was, was this, was the 147 because of the discount and the $4 because I paid $4 more than what the $50 was. So $151, okay? But now when you split the cost between what's in here and the rod, and I think I said $111, but this was $50 worth of merchandise. And if you discount this against what I actually paid out, my, my actual outgo is actually $101, not $111. That's a misprint um, a mistake on my trying to calculate this by head. So I just wanted to let you know, I, so for $177 rod, uh, $151 that I purchased for one rod, I got this. Now, when I do a rod replacement, when I do a, um, when I have to get things for my family, I usually don't count that. I mean, if I was being real rigid, I guess I would. Um, but I'm talking about a new purchases, and so this was the advantage. Uh, what I am gonna do in the future, because people still are asking, well, how do you, are you able to do that and start from scratch? And so what I'll do is I'll start from scratch how I'm able to purchase a rod. If I just went into a store and I wanted to purchase that rod, what would I do? How would I prep to purchase that rod? There are two things before I get, before I 
in this, uh, this video. Number one is I don't shop everywhere. Number two, I make sure that where I shop, that place does price comparisons with other companies that are around, number one. Number two, um, I always make sure that it has some sort of a reward program so that I could benefit between purchases. So that's what Bass Pro Shops affords me, Dick Sporting Goods affords me, and Sportsman's Warehouse affords me. That's why I go with those chains. And unfortunately, if the rod or reel or equipment in general is not sold in one of those three, I buy very little outside of it because for me, it's about saving money by buying, you know, buying this stuff, uh, this equipment. And just so that you know, and I think I mentioned this before, the rod that you purchase today, that's a $75 or even a $50 rod in some cases, has the technology of a $200 rod 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And the reason why is because technology, what tends to happen with technology, as you, many of you know this, what tends to happen with technology is that the company does not give up that technology because it innovates on its higher end. It just passes that, pass that down to the lower, the, the lower end uh, of its um, rods, reels, lures, etc. That's what happened with the Stratic series where you had, I think it was the Stella was a big $600 rod and um, reel, and they took the Stella guts and design and put it in a Stratic FL. So then that discounted the Stratic FK, and now the Stratic CI looks like it's on its way out the door because the Vanguard is taking that ring. So it just happens, it happens. And then of course, you know, names get stale over time, so you gotta either innovate or replace. But I want you all to know that the rods that you're purchasing today, if you're purchasing rods at, I'd say between, on the lowest, lowest, lowest end, 50 bucks up through say maybe 150 now nah, maybe $200 you're dealing with technology no but yeah you're dealing with technology that is much that is as good or much better than what uh Kevin Van Dam was winning tournament after tournament with when he was in his prime and uh in the Bassmasters so I just want you to think about that so once again, like I always say, don't let anybody convince you to break your family's budget to buy all this equipment, but do everything you can to break your personal best. I'll see you next time. Take care.